Chairman. Call Phil Clifford. Thank you, Mr Chairman. I want to pick up where uh, my colleague Kelvin Davis left off and make some comments about um, uh, part two, clause two, about the bylaw making power of local authorities. To borrow the turn of phrase from, uh, from Stuart Nash, I think it was, you could drive a house truck through uh, the wording in some of these clauses. Um, clause 2 says a local authority may make a bylaw only if it is satisfied that, uh, under subclause A1, um, the bylaw is necessary to protect the area. To protect the area. I mean, that's ridiculous. That is so, that is so wide-ranging. It's so lacking in any kind of concrete meaning or, or, uh, or specificity that it just makes a complete mockery of, of the bill. A, a, a council can make a bylaw if it's satisfied that this bill will, is necessary to protect the area. Well, protect the area against what? Against whom? It's an, it's an absolute nonsense. Um, uh, Subclause B, the bylaw is the most appropriate and proportionate way. Well, that's an, there's an irony right there, Mr Chairman, that this entire bill is disproportionate. That's the problem with it. It criminalises a whole class of people and a whole class of activity uh, unnecessarily, when it could actually be focusing on the problem, and that is people who, who dump waste uh, in uh, these scenic places. The bylaw is supposed to be the most appropriate and proportionate way of addressing the perceived problem. Perceived by who? So there's a perception that there's a problem, and then a council can pass a bylaw to outlaw freedom camping across all but 100% of its territory. It's absolutely ridiculous. It is heavy handed and it's punitive. So there's a perceived problem. The council thinks that it needs to protect the area, and that's justification enough under this bill for it to pass a bylaw that will outlaw freedom camping, a, free, a freedom that generations of New Zealanders have enjoyed can be outlawed across large swathes of territory. Now, Louise Upston occasionally op has opened her mouth on this debate. She refuses to get up and take a call. I don't know why. She sits there in the back benches on the government side saying, read the bill, read the bill. Well, I know from the select committee discussions that actually Louise Upston had grave concerns about this bill, as did Cam Calder. They had serious concerns that this bill is punitive and heavy-handed and does, in fact, threaten the freedom of New Zealanders to enjoy the great outdoors. Well, I challenge Louise Upson to get up and take a call, actually, and at least the minister, at least the minister had the good grace to get up and engage in a little bit of debate, and I thank her for that. But to be honest, I was, I was mystified, minister. All you did was repeat what's already in the, in the law, supposedly to avoid doubt, and that's a statement that this bill does not allow blanket bans. Well, we've already, we've already asked you what percentage of a ban is acceptable. Is 98% OK? Is 95%? Maybe 99 is, if there's a perceived problem that needs to be remedied by the council. Um, thank you, thank you, Rick Barker. That's a very good suggestion. Look, the, the minister also said that the bill specifically protects freedom camping unless it's outlawed. Well, this is a kind of Alice in Wonderland logic. If you say that it's so, then it must be so. Well, it's not. The status quo makes it quite difficult for councils to uh, outlaw freedom camping across large areas of land. It does. It makes it quite difficult for it to do that, and it's not easy for them to enforce it. But what Minister, Minister, what you are doing with this bill is that you are handing councils, not as you said, one small tool in a toolbox. Uh, what you are, what you, Minister, not the Chairman, what you are giving councils is not one small tool in a toolbox. You are giving them a powerful and efficient tool to outlaw freedom camping across large swathes of New Zealand and to enforce it in a heavy handed way with $200 instant fines for people who happen to find themselves uh, parked up and sleeping overnight 
in a, in a prohibited area. What, what punitive, bureaucratic and authoritarian, Mr Chairman, streak lies in the heart of the National Party that they would think it's OK to deal with this problem, this specific problem of people dumping waste in some of our country's scenic areas by imposing this heavy-handed regime. It is, um, it is way beyond what, is, what any normal person would consider to be a proportionate response to this problem. It threatens a fundamental freedom that New Zealanders have enjoyed for a very long time. Well, all I, all I can assume from that outburst from uh, Louise Upston is that she's never gone away for a weekend surfing or tramping or hunting and has never slept on the side of the road, has never pitched, has never pitched a tent in some beautiful part of New Zealand as she's gone off uh, climbing mountains, tramping or fishing. That's right. It must be that she stays in five-star hotels and that she doesn't give a damn for the thousands and thousands of New Zealanders who spend their retirement travelling around this beautiful nation of ours in self-contained camper vans enjoying the great outdoors in this country, who are fearful that this bureaucratic and punitive law is going to, is going to crack down on their freedom to enjoy New Zealand. Now, I know that Cam Calder, he's a man of the world, he's travelled around, I bet he's slept on beaches. He's, he's probably slept under hedgerows, as Cam Calder. He doesn't like this law, but why doesn't he get up and take a call? Why doesn't he get up and take a call and explain why he's voting for this heavy-handed bureaucratic legislation? Mr. Uh, Dr. Cam Calder. I move that the question be now put. Okay.